You can now connect your video transmitter, and to do that, we're going to need our 3D printed mount for our antenna and XT60 battery connector. We're going to need our video transmitter, and we're going to need a lock nut, a lock washer, and a friction washer. If your video transmitter did not come with this, you can pick these three items up at any hardware store. You begin with your video transmitter. Take off the red protective cap. We won't be using that. Take the 3D printed mount with the battery connector facing outward and simply slide the video transmitter in there with the electronics facing upward. Take the friction washer and place it on the antenna. Take the lock washer and put that right on top of it. Then take your nut and place that on top of the antenna. It's handy to have a nut driver, give it a tight down. Make sure that the electronics is facing upward when you tighten this down. And you may want to hold the antenna and the nut on the inside so it doesn't spin. Give it a nice tightening. Perfect, just like that. The label side is facing down and the electronics is facing up. Now take your double sided tape and put a piece of it on the bottom of the video transmitter. Just like that. And cut off the excess. Give it a good squeeze. Peel off the release paper. Careful not to pull the adhesive off. And now that's prepped and ready for installation. We've reached the moment where we're going to finish building your quadcopter. We're going to be securing the top plate on in just a few moments. We begin by me taking my reading glasses and putting them on my nose. You begin by taking the video transmitter assembly with the electronics facing up and taking the buzzer and moving it out of the way so we can put it right on top of our red standoffs and slide it all the way down. Now take the video transmitter cable and line it up with the pins on your video transmitter. You'll notice they're facing towards the board, so I'm going to orient my cable so they're facing the same way and stick that in. Just like that. Now we have our ad adhesive on there. We're going to stick it right on top of our Spectrum satellite receiver. And it's holding in place like that. So instead of sticking it on the top plate, we're going to do it this way so we have access to the controls. Now return your attention to the XT battery connector. And you'll notice the shape matches exactly that of the 3D printed mount. So slide the 3D printed mount up slightly until the XT battery connector can fit right inside there, flush at top. Push it all the way down, and if you need to, pull the wires inward so it fits just like that. It's okay to have a little slack of the power wires right there. We're going to tie that down later. I have something very important I want to stress. Your power lead gets a lot of tension, so it's a good idea to use a tie down to secure it so it doesn't get pulled out. We're going to do that now before we attach the top plate because it's much easier. These wires here for the LED and the power, we can just bind these together. And very simple, we have two holes here, one slit there, and a hole here. And we're going to run this tie-on through both of them and secure it. I like to hide the knuckle of the tie-on by putting it on the inside. And to do that, I simply am going to take it over the power wires and through the hole in the bottom. And from there, I'm just going to go into the other hole, just like that. Flipping around, you'll see inside the tie-on now, I have cradled the two power wires and the two LED wires and nothing else. So at that point, let's just push this through so we have most of the tail coming up the outside end and the knuckle on top of the wires pretty much. At that point, simply just slide that end in and start ratcheting it down. Again, I want to make sure that I'm pushing. Here's another tip. See that 
the bulge there, put your finger on it to hold it flat. While it's flat, you can start ratcheting that down. You might have to push some more plastic through there as you ratchet it down and keep pushing that ball down so we don't have that ugly look. When you are done, make sure that your XT60 connector is flush and not recessed, and then ratchet that down as far as you can. Take your diagonal cutters and cut the excess off. There we go. Now we have a tie on nicely securing our power wires and our LED wires and that's going to take the stress off of them. If we should have a crash and yank on the XT60, it's not going to put undue stress on these wires and pull it out of the power distribution board. So it's very important to tie that down well to protect your XT60 and power leads to the power distribution board. 